Welcome to the graduation ceremony for Baptist College of Health Sciences. We appreciate First Baptist Church Millington for sharing their beautiful sanctuary and facilities with us during this special occasion. Before we begin the commencement ceremony, I want to make a few announcements. In the event of an emergency, please take a moment and familiarize yourself with the nearest emergency exits. We ask that you would please silence all cell phones and pagers. First Baptist Church is a no-smoking campus, and we appreciate your cooperation in complying with this designation.
please remain standing for the presentation of colors, which will pre be presented by the White Station High School Junior ROTC, followed by our national anthem, the exit of the color guard, and the invocation. We request that all men remove their headgear until after the exit of the color guard and the invocation. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you and we want to thank you for this glorious day. It's a day of celebration for many students who are now graduating, but Lord, most importantly, we also celebrate a season, a season in which you loved mankind so much that you sent his son to save such wicked people as ourselves. Lord, I pray for each individual here. I pray, Lord, that you would meet their needs um, whether it be physically, mentally, spiritually, or even financially. Lord, you each, each person in here to be a light into a fallen world. We thank you for the education we've received. We thank you for the support we've had from friends, family, and most importantly from our faculty who have believed in us, inspired us, and encouraged us along this journey. Lord, we just ask for your blessings upon this day. May we all glorify you in what we say and what we do. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Good evening. I'm Betty Sue McGarvey, President of Baptist College of Health Sciences, and I welcome all of you to our 32nd commencement. This ceremony is a special time for these graduates, their family and friends, as well as a proud accomplishment in the history of Baptist Memorial Healthcare. 
a health care system whose visionary leaders chartered the college in December of 1994 as a commitment to its threefold mission of emulating Christ, healing, preaching, and teaching. Baptist College stands on the proud tradition of over 100 years of teaching, which began in 1912. Today, the college's mission is to prepare graduates for careers of service and leadership by providing a comprehensive health sciences education within an environment where learning and Christian principles are integrated. Today, the college will award baccalaureate degrees in health sciences and nursing, and these graduates will write their own chapter in the legacy of excellence and join over 7,000 alumni who preceded them. I will now introduce the distinguished members of our platform party. I ask each person to stand when introduced and to remain standing until the introductions are complete. Please hold your applause until all have been recognized. First, beginning on my right, is Ms. Kathy Yancey, class of 2017, who brought our special invocation. Next to her is Ms. Chandra Renee Ellerson, class of 2017, who will bring our scripture selection for our commencement this evening. Dr. Pam Cherry, Associate Professor of Nursing, who was selected as the 2017 Rose Y. Temple Distinguished Faculty Member and carried the ceremonial college mace for our commencement. Ms. Shirley Morkecho, the Rose Y. Temple Distinguished Staff Member of 2017, who carried the college banner in the academic processional. Dr. Kathy Stepter, Acting Chair of Nursing and Associate Professor of Nursing, and also a graduate from the class of 1992, who will lead us in singing our alma mater later in the program. Ms. Sherita Martin, Director of Development with the Baptist Memorial Healthcare Foundation. Dr. Chris Church, Professor of Philosophy and Religion, and is also serving as our inaugural president of the college's Faculty Senate. Our distinguished speaker, Dr. Robert Waller, who will be introduced in, later, in greater detail prior to his address. Dr. William Cochran, Chair of the College Board of Directors. Dr. Lordana Hager, Provost and Vice President of Academic and Student Affairs. Dr. Ann Plum, Dean of Nursing. Dr. Carol Warren, Dean of Allied Health. Dr. Barry Schultz, Dean of General Education and Health Studies. And Mr. John Berger, our Registrar. And finally, our talented musicians, Mrs. Jane Smothers, who's our organist this evening, and our special violinist and vocalist, Ms. Melanie Franklin. Would you please join me in acknowledging this special platform? I can't express enough how much we appreciate First Baptist being here, and you can see why the skill of their staff is amazing. Thank you, Ken, for that. I also want to acknowledge some other special guests in the audience, and as I acknowledge you, if you're a part of that group, please stand so that we can um, recognize you. I'm going to pause just a moment. give them a big round of applause. They have been tremendous. Thank you so much. First is a group of dedicated leaders who give generously of their time and talents to sustain the mission and vision for Baptist College of Health Sciences. And that's the members of our College Board of Directors. I introduced Dr. William Cochran earlier, but also joining us today is Dr. Sunny Golden. Dr. Golden, would you stand? Miss Anita Vaughn and Mrs. Denise Burnett-Stewart, 
So glad you're here with us today. Thank you. And then a new member who will be joining the College Board of Directors in just a few days is Mr. Jim Ainsworth. Jim, would you please stand to be acknowledged? Thank you for coming, you and Sarah both. The education of our students is truly a partnership with our colleagues throughout Baptist Memorial Healthcare. If you're an associate with Baptist Memorial Healthcare, no matter what role you're in, would you please stand because we're so grateful that you're here with us today. Some up in the balcony. Wonderful, thank you for being here. And then also, I want to acknowledge any of our alumni, either from the Baptist College of Health Sciences or for one of our hospital-based programs. Um, they literally serve our community and people around the world. If you're one of our alumni, would you please stand so we can acknowledge you as well? So good having y'all here. And then, like I said, our sincere gratitude to Dr. David Level and the staff of First Baptist Church for allowing us to use this beautiful sanctuary for our commencement this evening. Thank you for making this such a special event for our graduates and for their families. Now, Ms. Ellerson will read a scripture selection for our gathering tonight. Following the reading, Ms. Franklin will bring our special music, and then Dr. Cochran will introduce our distinguished commencement speaker. Ms. Ellerson. I'll be reading Romans 5, 1 through 5. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into which Christ in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God, not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character and character hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit by whom he has given us. Thank you. Let your light shine before all men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. the 
sky, praying to our Father in the name of Jesus, make us a beacon in darkest time. So carry a candle, run to the darkness, seek a Our commencement speaker this evening is a well-respected physician who has used his knowledge and influence to affect some major changes in the healthcare landscape. Dr. Robert R. Waller served as a professor of ophthalmology and department chair at Mayo Clinic College of Medicine in Rochester, Minnesota. Later, he served as president and chief executive officer of the Mayo Clinic healthcare system from 1988 to 1998. Dr. Waller also served as president of the Mayo's Foundation's Board of Trustees. Under his leadership, the Mayo Health System was launched as a regional network of hospitals and clinics. A native Miffian, Dr. Waller received his undergraduate degree from Duke University and his medical degree from the University of Tennessee College of Medicine. I also learned that he has Mississippi roots, and when you hear his accomplishments throughout this country and around the world, uh, you're gonna be mighty proud of him. Dr. Waller has received many awards and recognition for his leadership and contribution to healthcare, including the Distinguished Alumnus Award from the University of Tennessee the Medical Executive Award from the American College of Medical Group Administrators, an Honorary Doctor of Letters from the University of Jacksonville, the Yader Award by the American Group Practice Association, an Honorary Fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, the Duran Medal from the American Society for Quality, the Lucian Howe Medal by the American Ophthalmologic Society and the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Mayo Clinic. Dr. Waller is a member of numerous professional organizations, including the American Medical Association and is Chair Emeritus of the Healthcare Leadership Council in Washington, D.C. Dr. Waller has also been inducted into the nation's Healthcare Hall of Fame. He is past chair of the Institute for Healthcare Improvement in Cambridge, Massachusetts, where he continues to remain active. We are indeed fortunate to have such an esteemed physician and a leader with us today. Please join me in warmly welcoming Dr. Robert Waller. Thank you, Dr. Cochran. Can you hear me back, back there? Is that okay? Um, Dr. Cochran and Dr. McGarvey and I all have Mississippi roots, and if we talked a little bit further, we uh, recognize that we might be related. Uh, <laughs> but we're not sure. We'll have to figure that out. Th this is a happy day uh, for graduates, uh, parents, grandparents, spouses, perhaps soon to be spouses uh, and special friends. And congratulations to you all. I'm truly honored to be present for your celebration. And uh, if I may uh, send correct congratulations to the faculty, 
the administrative staff, the board of directors for helping make this day possible. Could we give them a round of applause? Thank you. Thank you. Well, on this happy day and looking at you who are about to graduate, there's so much on your minds that uh, what comes next uh, is maybe more important than what the commencement speaker is going to say to you. I bet there's some happy things to happen uh, later today. Come to think of it, I can remember not too much of what was said in pre previous commencement speeches that I have heard, and I've been to a few, although I do remember a dear friend suggesting to a graduating class that he spoke to, to always buy a good mattress because you spend a third of your life there, and also buy a good pair of shoes because you walk a lot. Um, so uh, that's not bad advice. I've traveled the trail where you are about to travel uh, and have been traveling that trail for some time. And, and I would share with you, if I may, in just a few minutes, six words on looking back that have meant more to me than anything else on my journey. Six words. Patient first, everybody matters, and unconditional kindness. Patients first, several years ago, Joseph Cardinal Bernadin of Chicago said the following, those who care for patients take on an immediate non-transferable responsibility to protect their interests regardless of markets, government programs, or healthcare networks, and that the good of the patient must be placed above all who participate in their care, directly or indirectly, and that the good of the patient must be placed above, above, the insurance company, the hospital, or the system of care. And he went on to say that those patients depend on us for a personal commitment and advocacy to help guide them through an increasingly complex and sometimes impersonal healthcare world. I've read these words every day for decades. They're posted in my office, in my pocket calendar, and in the surgeon's lounge in my locker room when I was active in surgery. You may want to consider doing the same. And looking back, I'm amazed at how often these words made all the difference in decision making at all levels, in the clinic, the operating room, and especially during my watch as chief executive of the Mayo Clinic, as did the words of my mentor, who said to me many, many times during my early years in training, the best way to care for the patient is to care for the patient. It's just that simple. The patient comes first. Everyone matters. Whether you be in nursing, biomedical sciences, medical laboratory science, healthcare management, pre-health studies, security, information systems, custodial services, whether a family physician, cardiac surgeon, chairman of the board, everyone matters. Every job is important. My college chapel choir rehearsed at 8 o'clock on Sunday morning. Can you imagine a college student getting up at 8 o'clock on Sunday morning to practice in the choir? But Paul Young, our director, expected that precisely at 8 o'clock, everyone would be on the edge of their seat, not seating back in their seat, but on the edge of their seat, 
music open, ready to sing when he raised his baton. No exceptions. If we were going to make beautiful music for the service, everyone mattered. He, we did what he said, and we were good. A number of years after the death of Mayor Henry Loeb of Memphis, Brad Martin and Hollis Leggett spoke about him on the occasion of the naming of a building at Lambeth College in the mayor's honor. Hollis Leggett told those present that when the mayor passed away, a local television reporter interviewed one of his political adversaries. And the adversary said, you know, the mayor and I never agreed on much of anything, but I will say one thing about him. He really cared for the little people. To which Hollis Leggert responded, the mayor's adversary probably didn't understand the mayor because to the mayor, there were no little people. To the mayor, there were no little people. There indeed are no little people in this world. Everyone matters. Everyone is important. At the same time, all of us are responsible for more than our individual actions. Like the chapel choir, we're called to responsibility not only for our own actions, but also for the team that we're part of and for the system in which we and our patients, in this case, live and work. It's about mutual respect for our patients, our families, and each other. So patients first, everyone matters. Those are four of the six words. Unconditional kindness. Someone once said that always be kind because someone you meet may be having a difficult time. Nothing is more important in this healthcare world or any other place in the world. The someone you meet may be a stranger, may be your best friend, may be a member of your family. Uh, author Henry James writes of the three most important things in life. The first thing is to be kind. The second is to be kind. And the third is to be kind. My dear friend Ed Rosenau, a wonderful physician, reflecting on his life as a physician for 40 years, believed that the most important element in his work was showing kindness at every turn. You will know, if you, and you know already, that patients are often terrified, they're anxious, they're exposed, and patients need to feel safe and trust unconditionally to lay bare their deepest vulnerabilities. And all of us, no matter what station we're in, whether we're in direct care or indirect care, can contribute to the healing process by the way we listen to and speak with and show compassion towards another human being. And in so doing, we remind ourselves and our patients what it is to be human. Maureen Bizignano from the Institute for Healthcare Improvement has suggested recently that the conversation you have with patients might be changed. Instead of asking first, what's the matter, instead ask first, what matters to you? And this puts the person, not the disease, at the center of the conversation, and it has the potential to dramatically change how we redesign healthcare in the years ahead, and that will be your responsibility. Always be kind. For someone you meet may be having a difficult time. Six words, patience first, everyone matters, and unconditional kindness. 
Well, because of who you are, I have one more thing I might add. Um, because of who you are and where you've received your wonderful education from this uh, wonderful school, many of you will be recognized and awarded for your good works when you uh, leave the school and go on into life. I hope this story might put in perspective awards and recognitions. I have a longtime friend, Elliot Daly. He's an ordained Presbyterian minister, and he's had a, a most unique ministry. He produced 500 episodes of the television show, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Does anybody know about it? Raise your hands if you're familiar with it. Most everybody here. Fred Rogers was a Presbyterian minister. And Elliot told me one time that when Fred Rogers was a little boy, he would go to the country and visit his grandfather, Mr. McFeely, who became a character in that television program. I see people nodding their heads. They remember Mr. McFeely. And he would say repeatedly to Fred Rogers, he would say, now, Freddie, never forget that I like you just the way you are. Don't ever change. God made you that way, and you are something special. And of course, Fred Rogers lived the rest of his life telling through the television as if there was just one child there and one child only, just how special they were. And he wasn't there to dispense rules and regulations. He was a grace note in their lives. Fred Rogers understood the power of grace. So a long time ago, 10 years or so ago, he received a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Television Academy of Arts and Sciences in Hollywood. That's out there in California somewhere. He turned that occasion into a gift for everyone in the audience. And he came to the podium and he said, would all of you along with me take just a moment in silence to think about the people who have helped you to become who you are? And there was a bit of laughter in the audience, but that quickly faded into some tears and some quiet weeping. Here was an audience uh, full of folks deep in gratitude for having been loved enough to become who they were. And then he said, may God be with you, and he sat down. That's all he did. Fred Rogers captured that night, I think, the essence of what awards are all about. Awards remind us that achievements, such as you have achieved today, have everything to do with God's presence in our lives and to his earthly partners, many of whom are here now, friends, strangers, who day in and day out help each of us as it's written in the book of Job, to help us stand on our feet. So that when awards come your way, and they surely will, uh, I hope you'll remember the Fred Rogers story. There are gonna be times uh, when you go to work now in this world of our healthcare world where you may hit a wall uh, Sister June Kaiser, who I used to work with in Minnesota, used to say to me, if you hit a wall, Bob, here's what you do. You throw your hat over the wall, and then you go get your hat. Life is good. Congratulations. What true wisdom. 
Patience first. Everyone matters. Unconditional kindness. I can't imagine a better send-off for the class of 2017. Thank you so much, Dr. Waller. And now will the deans come forward to present the August and December 2017 candidates for graduation. Candidates, please stand when presented by your dean. We'll begin with Dr. Barry Schultz, Dean of General Education and Health Sciences. Will the candidates for the Associate of Science degree in Pre-Health Studies from the Division of General Education and Health Studies please rise. Dr. McGarvey, I am pleased to present the candidates for the Associate of Science degree in Pre-Health Studies uh, as noted in the printed program. On behalf of the faculty of the college, I recommend that the appropriate degree be conferred. Please be seated. Will candidates for the Bachelor of Health Science degree with a major in Biomedical Science please rise? Dr. McGarvey, I am pleased to present the candidates for the Bachelor of Health Science degree in Biomedical Sciences. The names of the candidates appear in the printed program. On behalf of the faculty of the college, I recommend the appropriate degree be conferred. Candidates, please be seated. Will all the candidates for the Bachelor of Health Science degree with a major in healthcare management please rise? Dr. McGarvey, I am pleased to present the candidates for a Bachelor of Health Science degree in healthcare management. The names of the candidates appear in the printed program. On behalf of the faculty of the college, I recommend the appropriate degree be conferred. Candidates, please be seated. And now Dr. Carol Warren, Dean of Allied Health. Will all the candidates for the Bachelor of Health Science degree with a major in medical laboratory science please rise. Dr. McGarvey, I am pleased to present the candidates for the Bachelor of Health Science degree in medical laboratory science. The names of the candidates appear in the printed program. On behalf of the faculty of the college, I recommend that the appropriate degree be conferred. Please be seated. And now Dr. Ann Plum, Dean of Nursing. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree please rise? No. Dr. McGarvey, I'm pleased to present the candidates for the Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree. The names of the candidates appear in the printed program. On behalf of the faculty of the college, I recommend that the appropriate degrees be conferred. Please remain standing. Will the Bachelor of Health Sciences candidates please stand along with the nursing candidates. Ladies and gentlemen of the August and December 2017 graduating classes of Baptist Memorial College of Health Sciences, with approval of the faculty of the college and upon certification by the dean of your division, that you have fulfilled all the requirements for graduation. With the authority vested in me by the Board of Directors of the Baptist Memorial College of Health Sciences, I confer upon each of you the degree that you have earned and admit you to all rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereunto. It is customary that you move your tassel from right to left, signifying that you have earned your degree. Graduates, please be seated. And now, and now Dr. Laura Dana Hager, Provost and Vice President of Academic and Student Affairs, will recognize those students receiving academic honors. Baccalaureate graduates who have distinguished themselves in their academic work by graduating with honors are listed in the program and can be identified by the color of the honor cords they are wearing. Will all graduates wearing the gold honor cord please stand now? Gold signifies summa cum laude, graduation with highest distinction. I, 
I would like to ask that you, you, you wait for the applause till later so that I can finish reading. Thank you. These graduates have earned a cumulative grade point average of 3.84 to 4.0. Let's acknowledge this accomplishment with a round of applause. Now you can clap. Please be seated. Will all graduates wearing red honor cords please stand now? Red signifies magna cum laude, graduate with high distinction. These graduates have a cumulative grade point average between 3.67 and 3.83. Please let's acknowledge their accomplishment. You may be seated. And now will all graduates wearing the white honor cord please stand. White signifies cum laude, graduation with distinction. These graduates have earned a cumulative grade point average between 3.50 and 3.66. Congratulations. Please be seated. Congratulations to all of you on your academic achievement. There are three additional groups who are wearing honor cords or medallions to signify their membership with a National Honor Society. First are members of Sigma Zeta, an honor society to recognize academic scholarship in the natural and computer sciences and mathematics. These graduates are wearing their organization's honor medallion. Next are members of Alpha Eta, the National Honor Society for Allied Health. These graduates are wearing green honor cords. They are recognized along with members of Beta Theta Chapter at Large of Sigma Theta Tau, the International Nursing Honor Society, who are wearing purple and white honor cords and stoles. Would all graduates and faculty in any of these professional honor societies please stand now to be recognized? You may be seated. Baptist College would not be a quality institution of higher education without student leaders and the significant service they provide to their fellow students and the college. Their leadership is evident in their roles as officers of student organizations, including the Student Government Association, the National Student Nursing Association, the Allied Health Student Association, Brothers and Sisters in Christ, Colleges Against Cancer, Pre-Med Without Borders, and the Cultural Exchange Club. Other student leaders volunteer to serve as presidential ambassadors or as nurse mentors. In recognition of their leadership contributions, these students are wearing a white stole as part of their academic regalia today. Would all student leaders in these groups please stand at this time? Congratulations for your service. You may be seated. In addition, the college would like to recognize those wearing the red, white, and blue cords, which are worn by our graduates, staff, or faculty. These cords honor those who have served or are serving in any military branch. Would you please stand now so that we may acknowledge you? Thank you. You may be seated. Speaking for all of the graduates, I take this time to express to parents, grandparents, spouses, children, and other relatives and special friends the appreciation these graduates feel for your love and support. So that you may share in their accomplishment, please stand when the name of your special graduate is called and remain standing until he or she leaves the stage. I know that the celebration, the spirit of celebration is electric in this room today. I just ask you to please um, practice kindness with the person's name who's going to be called after your loved one. I promise you, you have my word, I will give you uh, sufficient time to call out your particular person's name, but we want to make sure that each and every family member has that special moment for their loved one. So if you could please refrain from applauding or yelling until everyone has crossed the stage. It would be greatly appreciated. Dr. Cochran, Mr. Berger, academic deans and marshals, will you please prepare to grant the diplomas? 
The graduates will be introduced according to the program listing by their respective chair or associate dean. The graduates will be introduced this evening according to their listing by their respective chair or associate dean, and I'd like to ask them to stand to be recognized as well. First is Mrs. Michelle McDonald, Chair of General Education and Assistant Professor. Dr. David Rosenthal, Chair and Professor of Healthcare Management. Dr. Darius Wilson, Chair and Professor of Medical Laboratory Science. And Dr. Cheryl Johnson Joy, Professor and Associate Dean of Nursing. Please join me in thanking these academic leaders for their role in the education of these graduates. The following graduates from the Division of General Education and Health Studies have earned an Associate of Science in Pre-Health Studies. Tamara Barton. Michael Payne. Satoria Price. The following graduates from the Division of General Education and Health Studies have earned a Bachelor of Health Sciences degree in Biomedical Sciences. Kanisha Brown. Adidas Delonzo Eddings. Jerrica Janae Jarrett. Patrick Townsend Cum Laude. Let's acknowledge the accomplishment of these graduates. The following graduates from the Division of General Education and Health Studies have earned a Bachelor of Health Sciences degree in healthcare management. Jessica Barron. Nancy Alicia Kirkland. Let's acknowledge the accomplishments of these graduates. The following graduates from the Division of Allied Health have earned a Bachelor of Health Sciences degree in Medical Laboratory Science. Thank you. Mr. Aaron Jesse Dubuque. Ms. Chandra Renee Ellerson. Thank you. Ms. Amber 
Yvonne Howard. Wait a minute. Mrs. Lanisha King. Let's acknowledge the accomplishment of these baccalaureate graduates. Thank you. The following graduates have earned a Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree. Laditra K. Askew. <clears throat> Brittany Bridges. Georgia Bianca Brown. Jennifer Brown. Mary Kathy Chandler, Health Administration minor. Dallas Nathaniel Cox. Latricia D. Curry Nisby. Brittany Alicia Davis. Kayla Nicole Deaton. <coughs> Lashanta Dickerson. <coughs> Destiny Douglas. Amanda K. Durbin, summa cum laude. Holly Ann Eckel. Claudia Isela Espinosa. Mary Evans. Courtney Page Gable. Paola Granados. Heather Lee Gray, Health Administration minor, interdisciplinary minor. Carrie Ann Griggs, summa cum laude. Sandra Suzanne Grissom. Faith L. Halstead, summa cum laude. Shikandis Harris.
Brittany Harvey. B.B. Hashmi. Rachel Denise Hawkins, interdisciplinary minor. Kendra L. Henry. Bo Allen Hensley. Ardina Natasha Hicks. Alicia Renee Heinemann, magna cum laude. Natricia Holt. Brianna N Michelle Hopper. <laughs> Candace Hubbard, cum laude. <laughs> Serena Brooke Jackson. Sharonda Janice Jennings. Ada O. Jones. Summa cum laude. Felicia Jones. Joy Jones. Aaron Camille Joseph. Yes. Jacinta Keys, summa cum laude. Guele Lee. Sebron Alexandria Lee, cum laude. Judy Drury Leeton. Jamie Pilar Loftis, cum laude. Christina Martinez. Peyton Milligan. Woo! 
Carrie F. Moore. Christian Jira Moses. Rachel Puckett. Brittany Queen, Health Administration Minor. Karen Alejandra Ramirez. Sharon Sanders, magna cum laude. Emily Michelle Scott, magna cum laude. Haley Jeanette Siegler. Woo! Logan Nicole Smith. Sharita Nichelle Stone. Kaylin Nicole Soroviak. Trishita Kamona Swims. Magna Cum Laude. Shamika. Deshana Terry. <laughs> Desiree Tidwell. Fatima J.B. Treadwell. <laughs> Lindsay K. Waller, cum laude. Angela Lynette Walls. Tamika Walthall. Emily Ward Markle, Health Administration Minor. Alicia D. White. Uh -huh, I remember. Dewanica Rochelle Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Rhonda Williams J. 
Shakelia Diarva Williams. Kathy Campbell Yancey, summa cum laude. Let's acknowledge the accomplishment of these baccalaureate graduates. Graduates. These graduates. These graduates would not be here today without a talented and dedicated group of professionals who have helped them pursue their educational and career goals. I ask the faculty, staff, and administrators of Baptist College to stand. Will you please join me in a warm recognition of this outstanding faculty and staff? The special graduation awards listed in your program will be presented tonight by Dr. Cochran and Ms. Martin. These special awards are based on specific criteria as outlined in your program. All of these graduation awards have been funded through contributions to the Baptist Memorial Healthcare Foundation. I ask each award winner to please come to the stage as your name is announced. Dr. Cochran, would you please begin? This award was established to recognize a graduate who has demonstrated outstanding academic performance and strong leadership potential. The graduate receiving this award also exemplifies Christian principles in both the academic and clinical settings and has demonstrated a commitment to community service. The recipient of the College Board of Directors Award is Carrie Ann Griggs. The next award was established by the Pathology Group of Memphis in honor of Dr. Thomas Chesney, a distinguished general surgical pathologist who also serves on the college's board of directors. We are pleased to present the Dr. Thomas McCall Chesney Award to the graduate who has attained the highest grade point average among the graduates of the Medical Laboratory Science major. This award is presented to Aaron Jesse Dubuque. The Elizabeth Farnell Achievement Award was established by colleagues of Ms. Farnell to honor her many contributions to the nursing profession during her 20 years of service as Vice President of Nursing for Baptist Memorial Hospital. 
I am pleased to present the Elizabeth Farnell Achievement Award to the graduate who has attained the highest grade point average among the generic students in the nursing major. This year's recipient is Jacinta Keys. The next award was established to recognize the significant contributions made by Mr. Joseph H. Powell, who served as president and CEO of Baptist Memorial Healthcare from 1980 to 1994. The recipient of the Joseph H. Powell Award has demonstrated outstanding academic performance and the potential to pursue advanced education. The recipient is Patrick J. Townsend. This award is given in honor of Mrs. Sarah Ainsworth, a former faculty member of Baptist College, and her 25 years of dedication and commitment to the teaching profession. Will Mr. and Mrs. Sarah Ainsworth, Jim Ainsworth, please stand. The recipient of this award is recognized for her academic merit, particularly in sciences, her leadership potential, and a commitment to Christian values. The recipient of the Sarah Ainsworth Graduation Award is Kanisha Brown. Thank you, Dr. Cochran and Ms. Martin. At this time, Dr. Ann Plum, Dean of Nursing, will lead our graduates in the health care pledge, which is found on page eight of your program. Graduates, will you please rise? We will recite the pledge together with pausing at commas. Blessed be God, the creator, who has made all persons in his own image, shared his dignity with them without distinction, and valued each as priceless. With God as my witness, and with full knowledge of my obligations I am undertaking, I promise to care for the sick with all the skill and understanding I possess, without regard to race, beliefs, color, politics, social status, sparing no effort to conserve life, to alleviate suffering, and to promote health. I will respect at all times the dignity and religious beliefs of the patients under my care, holding in confidence all personal information entrusted to me, and refraining from any action which might endanger life or health. I will endeavor to keep my professional knowledge and skill at the highest level and to give loyal support and cooperation to all members of the health team. With God as my helper in my life and work, I will do my utmost to honor the code of ethics applied to health care and to uphold the integrity of my profession. Remain standing. Will the audience, faculty, and platform guests please rise? We ask you to join us to join our newest alumni of Baptist College in singing the alma mater found on page eight of your program. Leading the alma mater from the class of 1992 is Dr. Kathy Stepter. 
After the alma mater, please remain standing for the responsive reading led by Dr. Church and the recessional. The reading can also be found on page eight in your program. We ask each of you to join us for a reception honoring these graduates in the Fellowship Hall. Thank you for sharing this special commencement with us. Since our responsive reading will serve as our benediction, I would ask that men remove their headgear. May you be blessed with a spirit of gentleness and a heart that is tender. May you be blessed with a spirit of strength shining within you. May you be blessed with the spirit of compassion and fervent caring. May you be blessed with the spirit of openness, understanding, and respect. May the earth hold you. May the wind lift you up. May the fire of compassion draw and warm you. And may the water soothe your soul. Go in peace, for a hurting world waits for your healing touch. <laughs> 